my name is Nick, and in today's video I'm going to show you how we fix a Sony with model number XBR-55X930D. This model specifically is completely dead, it has no power, it is plugged in, and when I press my power button, we get no standby light, nothing from the set. Before we begin, I did want to let you know I started Nick's TV repair just over a decade ago, and since then we've fixed over 25,000 devices. What this means is I'm going to be showing you the quickest way to troubleshoot and fix this TV all the way down to a component level. First thing we need to do is open it up down to the circuit boards and take a closer look. Now that we've removed the back cover, we're going to do some DC voltage checks. We're going to use our chassis as ground. Now remember, when we're doing live voltage checks, there's always inherent risks, so you're doing this at your own risk. And the first thing we want to do is make sure we get 24 volts right here, which is is where our DC power supply is feeding the power into the TV. We do have our 24 volts. Next, we want to make sure we have that 24 volts at our DPS board as well. Now, on the top row over here, we want to go to the second wire from the top, and that also has 24 volts. That's good. Now, my next step is actually going to be disconnecting power, and we're going to be switching over from a DC live power check to a resistance check. So we're going to go to our ohms mode. We're going to want to do a quick check on the three capacitors over here that are to the right of this IC chip. And it looks like we're getting about 6.3 ohms, which is much too low. What that tells me is our DPS board is defective. My next step is to remove the DPS board out of circuit so we can take a closer look at it at our workbench. So we're going to start by disconnecting the wired connectors. We're going to press down on this clip. Same over here. Then we wiggle it out. We have a little clip on this one here. For these ribbons, there's a black latch. We are going to be lifting it up. Same over here. Now for this ribbon connector, we have to press down on this black latch and this one at the same time. And then we can go ahead and wiggle out the ribbon. We're going to do the same for this one down here. We're going to press both latches at the same time and wiggle it out. Now for this one, we're actually going to press the center and then wiggle it out. Next, we can remove the screws and the board should lift off. Now for the removal process, we're gonna start by adding a little bit of solder to all of the legs. But something I wanna point out is that we can't desolder it just with the soldering iron. We are gonna to have to use our hot air station and that's because there is a ground pad below the chip. So the only way to properly desolder this chip is with the hot air station. Now the reason I added some solder on the chip first is so that I can get a easy visual indicator of when the solder is molten. And it looks like it is just about now. So I should be able to remove the chip. And here we are. And while the board is still hot, we're gonna go ahead and remove some of that excess solder. Put a little extra solder in the center. All right, next we'll go ahead and put our replacement chip. And again, we're gonna use our hot air. Okay, it looks like the solder is getting molten. Now, one of the things I'm gonna do here is make sure I'm putting pressure on it. We do have solder oozing out. We'll have to clean that up. The reason I'm putting pressure is I want to make sure the chip is making proper contact on that bottom ground pad. And the only way to know that it is properly soldered is by physically pushing it down. All right, and it looks like our solder has solidified, so we're gonna add a little bit of flux. And we're just gonna touch up our joints, clean up some of that extra solder that oozed out. Now, I actually don't recommend you try to do this yourself at home unless you have experienced soldering for these smaller IC chips. And the main reason is if you look just above here, there are a lot of very, very small capacitors and resistors that are easy to knock off. If you do accidentally knock them off, it will be almost impossible for you to fix this board. All right, we're gonna do a quick cleanup, use some isopropyl alcohol, get rid of some of that flux. And you know what, I should have done this sooner during the removal process, but we're gonna recheck. Do we still have a short? And we do not have a short anymore. Let's check our fuse. We do have a beep in continuity mode, that's good. And no beep, that means our short is now gone. The DPS board is installed back into the TV. I just gave it some power. Now it does take a few seconds, but our white light should be coming on. And if it doesn't, there we go. So we are actually getting power now. 
Hey, there we go. We have full picture. So the TV is turning on. Now, before we call it a day, I'm gonna do one last multimeter check in DC volts. And what we're gonna do here is check our white wire up here. And we are now getting 3.4 volts. The second top row wire, we get nothing. On the, on the top row further away from the TV, the bottom pin, we get 3.3. Second to bottom, we get nothing. 12 volts, 12 volts, nothing, and 3.3, 3.4. If you're not sure how to remove the back cover for this TV, we do have a video that will be linked right over here. If you want to send in your DPS board for us to fix, we do offer those flat rate services which come with a one year warranty. That will be on our website linked in the description below. If you found the video helpful or useful, make sure to leave us a like, subscribe for more, and thank you for watching.